all right so once again the reason for the thermal physics and we are starting with the first question so the statement is there in some countries the soil is too cold for the plants to grow well in these countries plants are grown in plastic pots and kept inside the pots containing soil are placed on sand the sand is heated using electrical heater as shown in the diagram pretty much they have explained biology to us as well anyway the heating element in the diagram remains switched on okay the temperature of the sand remains constant at a value above the room temperature so can be something like 40 degrees centigrade or 50 or anything like that but it is constant explain why the temperature of the sand remains constant so the problem here is or the uh, actual question is even if the heater is switched on even if the heater is switched on all the time but still why the temperature of the sand remains at a constant value you see the reason is because we are heating the sand so the temperature of the sand would be higher than the temperature of the surrounding or you can say the temperature of the sand would be higher to the temperature of the room all right or surrounding so the sand would transmit or emit the heat energy to the surrounding and the uh, heat energy that the sand is getting from the heater equals to the heat energy that is transmitted by the sand to the surrounding only then the temperature of the sand may uh, may not be increased all right so basically uh, the sand is getting the heat energy from the heater but the temperature of the surrounding is less than the temperature of the sand so the sand emits the heat energy to the surrounding and the rate at which the heat energy is being transmitted equals the rate at which heat energy is gained by the sand only then the temperature of the sand will remain constant all right so moving on to the next one here we have some students heat water in a beaker they measure the temperature every minute they heat the water for eight minutes until it boils and then continue to heat it for five minutes okay so basically they have divided into two segments for the first eight minutes they heat it before it starts to boil and after that they continue to heat it so basically it has started to boil and it's been boiling for five more minutes and the question is uh yeah describe and explain how the temperature of the water during those uh, during the 13 minutes the 30 minutes like you can see from here they have split into two sections first eight minutes and then uh, next five minutes so when you're boiling the water the temperature of the water would be increased all right so whatever water you have you started with room temperature you start boiling it then its temperature would keep increasing 30 40 50 60 70 until it reaches a boiling point which is 100 degree centigrade so, and then what happens in the next five minutes the water starts to boil it's boiling now for the next five minutes at the process at the stage of boiling this is something that we discuss at later in tea. so at the process of, at the stage of boiling the temperature of the water does not change it remains 100 degrees centigrade until all the water has been converted into vapors so the temperature of the water would remain 100 degrees centigrade because the increase in internal energy is not there because all the energy provided by the heat heat source is being used to break the bonds or to has been used to convert water into steam so this is how we explain this one all right moving on to the next one number dash three an electrical heater is used to heat a liquid to its boiling point 
all right so in this case we are using the electrical heater to heat the liquid or to boil the liquid the diagram shows the apparatus and here's the apparatus we have a weighing machine we have electronic balance which would give us how much how much liquid is being evaporated so we can subtract the uh, initial volume and the final volume or we can subtract the final vo uh, sorry final mass from the initial mass that will give us the amount of liquid that has been boiled or that has been evaporated uh, when the liquid is boiling the heater supplies that much of thermal energy 1.6 megajoules the mass reading shown on the balance decreases from 3800 grams to 2300 grams so the remaining liquid has been trans um, has been converted into vapors and escaped the container calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization of the liquid so the formula that we have for the latent heat is e equals m times latent heat of vaporization e equals to ml then first we need to calculate how uh, how much mass was vaporized so that mass would be the total mass minus the remaining mass and that gives us one five double zero grams and if we convert it into kilograms so that'll be one point five kilograms one and a half kilogram so that'll be e equals yeah e equals mass is now 1.5 times the latent heat of vaporization it has to be calculated okay l sub v as it is and the energy supplied by the heater is given 1.26 megajoules or mega can also be thought as million 1.26 into 10 raised power 6 this is the prefix or the replacement for mega 1.26 into 10 raised power 6 uh, then you can just hit it on the calculator 1.26 into 10 raised power 6 divided by one and a half so after i hit it on the calculator Eight point four into ten to the power five, and we also have to write down the unit, so that'll be eight point four into ten to the power five joules per kilogram. All right, you can obtain the unit from the same formula. That if you rearrange it for LV latent heat, it'll be E over M. Energy was measured in joules, mass was measured in kilograms. So joules per kilogram that's the unit for it then we have the next one state and explain a precaution to improve the accuracy of the value of the specific latent heat calculated in the part a all right so in this case the energy that we are providing to the liquid some of the energy would be wasted to the surrounding so all we have to do is to reduce the heat loss by using some insulation to the container. So what we can write here is, so LV was calculated by using formula E over M. And if we somehow manage to make the value of E more accurate, then our answer for L uh, latent heat would also be more accurate okay so here we have the next one what has a specific heat capacity of 4200 joules so this is the heat capacity of water 
heat capacity is represented by a small c specific heat capacity is represented by a small c heat capacity is represented by uh, capital c and the boiling point of 100 degree celsius this is a mass given a mass of 0 0.30 kilograms of water at its boiling point is poured into a copper container which is initially at 11 degrees centigrade so initial temperature is this one after a few seconds the temperature of the water uh, temperature of the container and the water both are 95 so the temperature of the liquid changes to this is your final temperature which is 95 t2 uh, calculate the energy transfer from the water so this is a temperature change problem temperature change problem requires the use of specific heat capacity so the formula that we have for here is for the specific heat capacity that includes the specific heat capacity is e equals mc delta theta or delta t delta t stands for the change in temperature e stands for the amount of heat energy or the amount of energy transfer that you need to calculate mass is already given specific heat capacity is already given change in temperature also given indirectly so we can just calculate it it's not a big deal so energy would be written as it is e because that's something that we need to calculate mass is 0 0.30 times the specific heat capacity you gotta ensure one thing that the unit of mass and the unit of heat specific heat capacity for the mass should be same if uh, here the mass is given in kilograms then the specific heat capacity should also be in kilograms sometimes they change the unit so you got to be careful with it so specific heat capacity was 4200 times delta t is the change in temperature or the difference in temperature so uh, sorry this was your uh we have to boil it 200 degree celsius yeah so 100 the temperature change we have to consider from here because water boils at 100 degrees celsius all right so this can be regarded as the starting temperature and once the heat energy is transferred from there the temperature drops to 95 all right so 11 degrees celsius that's only the temperature of the container so we refer to the temperature of the liquid in both cases so from 100 degrees centigrade to 95 degrees centigrade and that'll be 100 minus 95 5 degree celsius then we can hit it on the calculator for the container and um, in these cases we try to leave the answer in two decimal places because that would be consistent with the values given in the data with the raw data so in 2sf let me hit it on the calculator that'll be Sixty three hundred joules. All right, the next thing is we need to calculate uh, the thermal capacity of the copper container, not the specific uh, uh, specific heat capacity or specific thermal capacity we need to calculate thermal capacity the capital c not the small c like i said over here specific heat capacity is represented by small c but the heat capacity or thermal capacity is represented by capital c we need to calculate capital c so formula for capital c is e equals we don't use mass in the um, thermal capacity we use e equals to capital c delta theta or delta t 
so we need to calculate the value of capital C so we can rearrange it C equals to E divided by the change in temperature for the copper container right so we change take the change in temperature for the material whose thermal capacity has to be calculated so there were three temperatures given we take the two temperatures that correspond to the temperature of the copper container or right, the energy that we calculated was 6300 divided by the change in temperature so the change in temperature for the copper container which was initially at 11 degrees celsius and then the temperature increased to 95 because it gained the heat energy from the boiling water so and the energy the amount of energy that that it gained from there is the same as the amount of energy that would be released by the water so water released that much energy when it was cooling down a little bit and that uh, energy was gained by the copper container which would be heated up so the change in temperature for the copper container is 95 minus 11 because these are the two values for the copper uh, uh, copper container so that will be 84 and once you hit it on the calculator the answer for that one will, will be 75 then you can write down you can uh, calculate the unit from here as well the unit of energy is joules and the unit of change in temperature is degree celsius so the answer would be 75 joules per degree celsius So latent heat of fusion, and, and we got to be careful with it. This is not specific latent heat of fusion. Yeah. So in, if it were specific latent heat of fusion, we would give reference to one kilogram as well or per kilogram. So this is how we define the latent heat of fusion. Once again, these are the terms that are proposed by the Cambridge. So our answer should ideally be in these terms. All right, so here it is. A sample of metal P at 100 degrees Celsius is heated steadily until its temperature reaches 400 degrees Celsius. The melting point of the metal is 250 degrees Celsius. On figure 3.1, sketch a graph to show how the temperature of the metal changes with time. Okay, so let me read it again. The sample of metal P at 100, 100 degrees Celsius is heated steadily until its temperature reaches 200 400 degrees centigrade meanwhile the melting point of the metal is 450 degrees celsius okay so our substance we started from 100 and at 250 your substance will start melting and we keep heating it to 400 degrees celsius so we have to draw the graph of it so first of all we change the temperature from 100 degrees celsius to 250 degrees celsius so it'll be from 100 to 250 all right, so we can draw a line over here. We started with 100, we increased to 250. Since the time is not given, so we're not really sure if that many seconds were, or that many minutes were used for this process or that many minutes. So we can just draw it arbitrarily. starting from 100 all the way till 250 or let me see if the time is given yeah the time is not given so after that at 250 
As it reaches 250, your substance would start melting. So for, for a while, your substance is being melted and whenever melting or boiling or the reverse of it happens, the temperature does not change because all the heat energy is used in the process of conversion in breaking bond, bonds or in combining the molecules like this so at 250 uh, this is the stage where melting is going on after your substance has been melted now its temperature will start increasing once all the substance has been melted all the solid has been melted into a liquid now its temperature would start increasing and the temperature would increase from uh, 250 to 400 and once again we don't know how much time is taken so we can draw it arbitrarily Now, once again, this question has three phases. So this phase from here to here is represented by the red line. When the temperature changes from 100 degrees centigrade to 250 degrees centigrade, there, there was a phase, uh, there, there was a temperature change. The solid remained solid. The phase did not change. As soon as it reached 250 degrees centigrade, now this is a melting point. And it'll stay at the same temperature till all the substance has been melted. And some of the time would be taken for the substance to be melted. And once the substance has been melted, all the substance has been melted, your solid has been converted into liquid, now the temperature would start rising again. So this is this part we have represented by the blue line here. When the temperature increases from 250 to 400, 400 degree centigrade. So first part, Temperature changes from 100 to 250. Second part, when the temperature does not change because the substance is being melted. The third part, when the substance is being completely melted, now the temperature of the liquid increases from 250 to 400. Then we have the next part. A sample of different metal Q has a latent heat of fusion, uh, has a greater latent heat of fusion. So Q, latent heat of Q is greater than the latent heat of sample P. And here we're discussing the latent heat of fusion. So I can write it over here, latent heat of fusion. P, P and Q are metals with the same melting point and the samples have the same heat capacity. Heat capacity means they will take the same time for their temperature or they will take the same energy for the temperature to change. The experiment is repeated with the sample Q. The sam uh, this sample is supplied with the same amount of heat energy per second as is supplied to the sample of P. Explain how the graph of temperature against time for Q differs from the previous one. Now the only change that we have here is that the latent heat for the substance q is greater than the latent heat for the substance p so the difference that is going to happen is in the middle part during the process of melting so if this one is for p and what happens is for q would be i'll start with the same thing but during melting it'll take more time so there will be bigger horizontal line to melt but since we are applying we are supplying the heat energy at the same rate so that uh, so the substance q would take more time all right so uh, moving on to the next one here we have 
Figure 2.1 shows a long cardboard tube sealed at both ends which contain many small pieces of metal. All right, the tube is tuned turn vertically so the pieces of metal fall from one end to the other. All right, so you turn you're turning it like upside down. Like this. So the pieces of metal fall from there to the other corner. The temperature of the pieces increase as a result of the fall. During the fall, the gravitational potential energy of the metal pieces is transferred to the other forms of energy. State those two forms of energy. One of them, as the metal pieces would be in motion, there would be kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Secondly, as they fall to the other end and they are having an impact with the other end, there will be heat energy and sound and or sound energy. So you have to write only two. So kinetic energy and heat or kinetic energy and sound or heat and sound. But kinetic energy I prefer you write anyway. Here we have the next one. Uh, this one is not directly related to the thermal physics, but it is related to the um, energy. Uh, the pieces fall within every distance of 1.2 meters. Okay. During one turn, the total mass of the metal pieces is zero, uh, 150 grams, which is 0 0.15 kilograms kilograms being the standard unit for the mass calculate the loss in gravitational potential energy of the pieces as they fall once okay and the gravitational field strength is this much 10 so uh what do we need to find gravitational potential the loss in gravitational potential energy that equals to mass times gravitational field strength times the distance that has been covered during the fall so the mass is 0 0.15 times uh, g which is 10 times the distance that is 1.2 so I'll hit it on the calculator. This is what we get from here. In the next part, we have to still turn the table quickly after the small metal pieces have fallen from one end to the other. 80 times the temperature increase by 7 degrees Celsius determine the specific heat capacity of the metal. So specific heat capacity of the metal has to be calculated. All right, so for specific heat capacity, we have the formula E equals MC delta T, delta theta, and specific heat capacity being represented by small c. If we rearrange it, that'll be M times delta T. The energy that was required or the energy that will be used is the same one because the uh, potential energy that was reduced from there would now be used to increase the temperature. So that will be 1.8. Once again, same energy has to be used and since it falls once again it falls 80 times you have to compensate for that one as well so this one would be 80 times we calculated the energy for one turn it's written over here so for the 80 uh 80 times or the 80 terms the total energy would be 80 times of 1.8 so we can multiply it by one point um multiply it by 80 80 times 1.8 then we can divide it by so the mass in this case was 0 0.15 
and the change in temperature for all those 80 times was 7 degree Celsius. Then you hit it on the calculator once again. So that'll be the unit for this one. The student repeats the same experiment, turning the tube more slowly. Suggest why a different temperature increase is obtained. So more energy would be provided to the tube and your pieces of metal, they will have more temperature to cool down and hence their temperature would be their change in temperature would be more their, their temperature would be dropped more